Well, good morning and welcome. We're delighted that you've joined us this morning as we um, begin a day of fasting together. And um, as we begin, I think it's probably appropriate to say, well, why fast? Um, this is also why fast as a whole group, as a church. Um, I think this is probably, to my knowledge, the first time I have ever done this myself. Um, in all my church history, which is quite a lot, I don't know if I've ever been in a church anywhere where the congregation has decided to fast uh, together for a period of time. And um, so that brings up the question, well, why then? Why fast? Um, and there are several reasons given in scripture to fast. Um, one of the reasons is in order to humble ourselves before the Lord. And passages like Deuteronomy chapter 8 um, remind us of that. They say things like, Be careful to follow every command that I am giving you today, the Lord says, so that you may live and increase and may enter and possess the land that the Lord promised on oath to your forefathers. Remember how the Lord your God led you all the way in the desert these 40 years to humble you and to test you in order to know what was in your heart, whether or not you would keep his commands. He humbled you, causing you to hunger, and then feeding you with manna, which neither you nor your ancestors had known, to teach you that humans do not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. And we also fast by, because of looking at the example of Jesus Christ in order to help us, as it did with him, to gain the victory over the temptations of the devil. We remember that Jesus used these very words from Deuteronomy in Matthew chapter 4, verses 1 through 4, where we read that Jesus was then led by the Spirit into the desert to be tempted by the devil. And after fasting 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry. The tempter came to him and said, If you are the Son of God, tell these stones to become bread. But Jesus answered, it is written, humans do not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. So we also then fast in order to join with Jesus in resisting the temptation of the devil. And finally, another reason why we fast as Christians is to express our longing for the coming of Jesus Christ who is the Word made flesh. As we read Jesus himself speak of it in Matthew chapter 9, verses 14 and 15, where we told that then John's disciples came and asked Jesus, how is it that we and the Pharisees fast, but your disciples do not fast? Jesus answered, how can the guests of the bridegroom mourn while he is with them? The time will come when the bridegroom will be taken from them, and then they will fast. And that time is now, in our time. And so this brings one last question, why fast at this time for us? And I think we can take what we've been taught in reverse order and say that we need to remind ourselves, um, I think physically, in our daily life, that Jesus really is the only answer. That the coming of Christ is what we need in order for things to be set right again. And that we need it in order to remind ourselves that we need to resist the devil, who is currently working to tear the church apart, using polarization over COVID, over sexuality, over racial issues, over politics, and many other things that should not be dividing the church to tear us apart. And we are foolish if we think we don't need God's help to resist that temptation. And fasting is a reminder of that. And we also need to fast in order to bring us back to the one thing that could ever potentially unite us and give us life. And that is the word of the living God. That is what needs to come together and be brought back into our focus. That as we, res we restrict ourselves from eating, we remind ourselves that it is feeding on the word of God that brings us life and peace and unity. And so that's what we are here to start today, is we are here gathered together as, as brothers and sisters in Jesus, of, Jesus, of Jesus and children of our Heavenly Father in order 
to set aside food for a day. And whether you do that um, all the length of today, whether you're starting now and going till tomorrow morning, or however you do that, for about a day, we're going to refuse to eat in order to feast on the word of our Lord. And so we are going to join together in worship to begin this time um, by singing together. And our first um, song together is going to be a hymn. This is um, The Church's One Foundation. Uh, this is hymn number 401. And it looks like I'm going to have to grab myself a hymnal. <laughs> So would you please stand with me as we sing hymn number 401, The Church is One Foundation. The church is one foundation is Jesus Christ her Lord. She is his new creation by water and the word. From heaven he came and sought her to be his holy bride. With his own blood he bought toil and tribulation and tumult of her war. She waits the consummation of peace forevermore. Till with the vision glorious her longing eyes are blessed. Yet she on earth hath union with God the three in one. And mystic sweet communion with those whose rest is one. O oh, happy ones and holy, Lord give us grace that we like them the meek and lowly on high may dwell with thee. Amen. Please be seated. We are going to pray a prayer of confession this morning, but we're going to pray it uh, in response. So you will actually need to look at the screen um, behind me. Uh, you will say the words that are in bold, and I will say the words that are not in bold. And um, for those of you online, it will appear on the screen for you. So will you... What's that? Oh, I missed a scripture reading. Thank you, Ruth. Never mind. We have a scripture reading first. <laughs> That's important. Uh, Ruth is going to come and read to us from the Gospel of John. So our first scripture reading this morning is from the book of John, chapter 16, through to chapter 17, 23. So John 16, verse 31. 
You believe at last, Jesus answered, but a time is coming and has come when you will be scattered, each to his own home. You will leave me all alone. Yet I'm not alone, for my Father is with me. I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart. I have overcome the world. And now Jesus talks to his Father. After Jesus said this, he looked toward heaven and prayed, Father, the time has come. Glorify your Son, that your Son may glorify you. For you granted him authority over all people, that he might give eternal life to all those who have, you have given him. Now this is eternal life, that they know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. I have brought you glory on earth by completing the work you gave me to do. And now, Father, glorify me in your presence with the glory I had with you before the world began. I have revealed you to those whom you gave me out of the world. They are yours. You gave them to me, and they have obeyed your word. Now they know that everything you have given me comes from you, for I gave them the words you gave me, and they accepted them. They knew with certainty that I came from you, and they believed that you sent me. I pray for them. I'm not praying for the world, but for those who have, you have given me, for they are yours. All I have is yours, and all you have is mine. The glory has come to me through them. I will remain in the world no longer, but they are still in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them by the power of your name, the name you gave me, so that they may be one as you, as we are one. While I was with them, I protected them and kept them safe by that name you gave me. None has been lost except the one doomed to destruction so that scripture would be fulfilled. I am coming to you now, but I say these things while I'm still in the world so that they may have the full measure of the joy within them, of my joy within them. I have given them your word and the world has hated them. For they are not of the world any more, any more than I am of the world. My prayer is that you take them out of my prayer is not that you take them out of the world, but that you protect them from the evil one. They are not of the world, even as I am not of it. Sanctify them by the truth. Your word is truth. As you sent me into the world, I have sent them into the world. For them I sanctify myself, that they too may be truly sanctified. My prayer is not for them alone. I pray also for those who will believe in me through their message, that all of them may be one, Father, just as you are in me and I am in you. May they also be in us, so that the world may believe that you have sent me. I have given them the glory that you gave me, that they may be one as we are one, I and them and you in me. May they be brought to complete unity to let the world know that you sent me and have loved them even as you have loved me. This is the word of the Lord. All right, now we're going to pray together. So I ask the prayer comes on the screen, and would you please join me as we pray? Almighty God, great sorrow threatens to overcome us. Our cares would overpower us. We know of no way out. God, be gracious and help us. Give strength to bear what you have sent. 
Let us not be overcome by fear. Give fatherly care for our loved ones. Merciful God, forgive us our sins against you and those whom we have hurt. We trust your grace and give our lives entirely into your hands. Do with us as it pleases you and as it is good for us. Whether we live or die, we are with you and you are with us, our God. Lord, we look for your salvation and your kingdom. Come, Lord Jesus, come. Amen. I would now like to invite the worship team to come forward and lead us. I would like to now invite Errol to come forward and read scripture for us. We'll be reading Psalm 130. Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. O Lord, hear my voice. Let your, be, your, let your ears be attentive to my cry for mercy. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness. Therefore, you are feared. I wait for the Lord, my soul waits, and in his word I put my hope. My soul waits for the Lord more than watchmen wait for the morning. More than watchmen wait for the morning. O Israel, put your hope in the Lord, for with the Lord is unfailing love, and with him is full redemption. He himself will redeem Israel from all their sins. This is the word of the Lord. This time we're going to pray, and I'm going to start, and at one point in the prayer, I am going to invite you to pray, but it's going to be a little bit different. Um, we're going to do something that uh, our brothers and sisters in South Korea do all the time, and uh, they pray a lot. And when they pray in public on certain times, in certain ways, uh, when they lift up their prayers of the community, they don't wait for each person to say their own thing. They all pray out loud, all at the same time. So I am going to open in prayer, and then I'm going to invite in that prayer for you to lift up your own prayers, and at that time, I invite you to just start out loud and just pray all at the same time. And I'll give you a bit of time, and then I'll wrap it up and close. So let's, let's, let's pray in this way together. Heavenly Father, we come to you, recognizing today our need for you. Lord, we recognize that we are creatures who are needy. We recognize that we do need the food that you provide for us to sustain us and to help us. But Father, recognizing that all of that comes from your hand, we recognize something that we need even more. That Father, we need you to speak to us, and we need to listen to what you say. And so, Heavenly Father, we ask that today as we do that, as we give up food and seek to feast on your word, we pray that you would soften our hearts and open our eyes so that we might see and hear what you have for us. And so, Father, at this time, we want to bring before you all the many concerns that are on our hearts. Father, we recognize that there are many divisions between brothers and sisters in Christ. And Father, we recognize that there is a great amount of pressure at this time. 
that is seeking to divide the church, that your enemy, the devil, is seeking to tear us apart. And so, Father, we now bring before you our prayers for your help. Lord, we think of individuals, we think of groups of people, we think of all of these things, and we bring these prayer requests to you now at this time. Father, you are the God who hears our prayers. You hear the cries of our hearts and even those expressions that we can't pour forth with speech. You know our neediness more than we know it ourselves. And so in our neediness, we come to you and we ask you to have mercy upon us. Then in all the ways where we may be arrogant, we ask you to humble us in all the ways where others may be arrogant, we ask you to help us to give that, to show patience. And Father, in all matters where we are tempted to disobey with you, we pray that you would help us to resist so that we might live in the light of your son, Jesus Christ, in the glory of the good news of the gospel, no matter what may come our way. For we recognize that there is only life in one place, that it is found in your Son, Jesus Christ, the Word made flesh. In his name we pray. Amen. We're now going to sing another hymn. We're going to sing hymn number 630. Uh, this hymn is, What a Friend We Have in Jesus. So I invite you to stand with me as we now sing number 630, What a Friend We Have in Jesus.
Amen. Please be seated. I'd now like to invite Lynn forward to do our final scripture reading. Psalm 77, I cried out to God for help. I cried out to God to hear me. When I was in distress, I sought the Lord. At night, I stretched out untiring hands, and my soul refused to be comforted. I remembered you, O God, and I groaned. I mused, and my spirit grew faint. My eyes kept from closing. I was too troubled to speak. I thought about the former days, the years of long ago. I remembered my songs in the night. My heart mused and my spirit inquired, will the Lord reject forever? Will he never show his favor again? Has his unfailing love vanished forever? Has his people failed? Has his promise failed for all time? Has God forgotten to be merciful? Has he in anger withheld his compassion? Then I thought, to this I will appeal, the years of the right hand of the Most High. I will remember the deeds of the Lord. Yes, I will remember your miracles of long ago. I will meditate on all your works and consider all your mighty deeds. Your ways, O God, are holy. What God is as great as our God? You are the God who performs miracles. You display your power among the peoples. With your mighty arm, you redeemed your people, the descendants of Jacob and Joseph. The waters saw you, O God. The waters saw you and writhed. The very depths were convulsed. The clouds poured down water and the skies resounded with thunder. Your arrows flashed back and forth. Your thunder was heard in the whirlwind. Your lightning lit up the world. The earth trembled and quaked. Your path led through the sea, your ways through the mighty waters, though your footprints were not seen. You led your people like a flock by the hand of Moses and Aaron. Your ways, O oh God, are holy. What God is so great as our God? And so, my brothers and sisters in Christ, may you go now, knowing that there is only one who can lead us like a flock, and that is our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And so, may you now go, and as you hunger physically, may you feast on the word of Christ. May you look to him and his word to give you wisdom and direction, to comfort you and to guide you, to guard you and to protect you, and to lead you into life. Go now in peace and feast on his word. Amen.